Hello. In this video, we are going to derive an expression for the normalization constant for a molecular orbital that is formed by a linear combination of atomic orbitals for a diatomic molecule where one atom we call A and another one we call B and uh, for consistency we call the atomic orbital on A, A and the atomic orbital on B we call that B. If we do that the resulting unnormalized wave function would be A minus B. If that is so then the complex conjugate of this particular unnormalized wave function would be A star minus B star. So recall to find the normalization constant we want to set the integral of n times psi star n psi equal to 1. So that's equivalent to factoring out an n star at the beginning times psi star psi d tau and setting that equal to 1 and solving for n in this particular case to make the integral equation true. Well, we substitute in the exact expressions for psi in this case. We have n squared in front. Then we have a star minus b star times a minus b d tau, which is equal to 1. Now we can FOIL to actually work out what this expression is, and we see that's going to give us a star a plus b star b. I'm writing these uh, terms in a slightly different order than we would get from FOILing, but we get the same exact terms. Minus a star b minus b star a d tau and this is all equal to 1. For reasons which we had explained in the previous video, we recall that A is a normalized atomic orbital, B is a normalized atomic orbital. Therefore, this particular part of the integral is equal to 1. This particular portion of the integral is also equal to 1. And then we have to define an integral which we call the overlap integral, which is equal to a star b d tau, which by symmetry is also equal to the integral of b star a d tau. With that definition, we realize that a star b portion here is equal to this integral s as well as b star a is equal to the integral s. So inside the integral we have that 1 plus 1 minus s minus s times n squared is equal to 1. Now we simply sum the terms inside the parentheses to get that n squared times the quantity 2 minus 2s is equal to 1. We can divide each side by 2 minus 2s to get that n squared is equal to 1 divided by 2 minus 2s. We'll take the step here of factoring out a 2 in the denominator to get that 1 divided by the quantity 2 times the quantity 1 minus s. And now we take the square root of each side to get that n is equal to the square root of 1 divided by 2 times the quantity 1 minus s. Again, we see that 
if we have a diatomic molecule and we form a molecular orbital from a linear combination of atomic orbitals, that the normalization constant depends upon this integral s, which is the overlap between orbitals on A and the orbital on B. We also see an interesting feature here is that if we ignore overlap, so we have the neglect of overlap, that sets the integral s to zero by assertion, and that gives us that the normalization constant would be the square root of one over two. If we neglect overlap, the normalization constant for the bonding orbital is exactly the same as the normalization constant for the anti-bonding orbital. If we don't neglect overlap, so we actually explicitly calculate s and get some value other than zero, then the normalization constants for the bonding orbital and the anti-bonding orbital will be different. And part of the uh, implication of the fact of having different normalization constants will be that when we have a bond formation, that the antibonding orbital will often be more antibonding than the bonding orbital is bonding. And that would not be true if we neglect overlap. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.